All right, so today we got ourselves a classic pull day. Um, you know, back biceps type of work. So pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, three sets. Rows, three sets, and then some bicep curls. Uh, with I did them with dumbbells today uh, with fat grips. And yeah, you know, uh, you know, pretty good session. At the time of me doing like this voice recording, it was at, at, it's, at, it's 10 p.m. right now. When I was working out, it was 10 a.m. actually, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, so just to kind of take you through my training, I'm just doing things with a five, not sorry, not five, but, um, 25 pound plate. Uh, this is getting me to about, I'd say, uh, what at most six reps, maybe, uh, I think it was seven. Um, and I'm doing them with the neutral grip handles and I have those black fat grips on them. Uh, you know, of course those aren't like the biggest fat grips that I have, but uh, I can't really fit the blue fat grips on the neutral grip handles because it's like it'll get in the way and I can't really hold it like that. Um, so, yeah, and I just did kind of neutral grip because I just kind of felt like doing neutral grip instead of like uh, the usual like overhand, just standard pull up grip. Um, and in between my sets of me doing the pull ups, I kind of superseded it with like explosive, uh, explosive push ups. So like either just me doing clap push-ups or just me doing push-ups off the ground. So um, I kind of did that because it's like for one, the weighted pull-ups are going to be like a lot more slower, a lot more controlled. And then I'm kind of just supersetting that with something very explosive, very um, bouncy and stuff like that. And I didn't film that because it was just kind of something I was just, just doing. Um... And it was not like that was like the main purpose of this workout was to do explosive push-ups. The main purpose was just to work my back. But by me also doing those push-ups, I'm kind of keeping my shoulders like nice and warm whilst my back muscles are resting. Because I'm getting like my front shoulder working. I'm still getting blood to my rotator cuff. I'm getting uh, my pecs and my core working, um, which is going to just help out with my recovery when it comes to, um, you know, just my back in between sets because I'm still having blood flow to those upper body areas instead of like, you know, cooling down immediately, right? So, you know, I don't think we should, uh, for a lot of our movements, I don't think we should have like, you know, uh, three minute rest times or something like that or whatever the case may be. Um, because for one, that's like a sign of like low work capacity. Um, because I remember at first it would take me like hours just to do like a session that I might do today. That might take me like 40 minutes. It might take me like an hour, two hours or something like that. Now I can just do like everything I need to do within like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes at least. Um, so you just have to be able to build up that work capacity. You build a work capacity by uh, doing things like more cardio. Um, maybe you decrease the weight and you start working with like, you know, start doing like higher rep stuff or, you know, you work with your body weight. Um over the time, it's like, you know, you get, you can gain that endurance while it's also still gaining a lot of strength and a lot of uh, muscles as well. Um, so, yeah, again, you're going to be able to increase your work capacity um, for a lot of things, especially when you just don't sit around on your, you know, your behind in between sets. And it's also best um, to try and superset movements. So instead of like, you know, if you're going to do bench or something like that. Um, you do, I don't know, three sets of five or something or three sets of seven. So that's probably like pretty heavy weight instead of just like, you know, sitting over the bench, looking, scrolling your phone for like the next three minutes, go and possibly do some squats or something like that. Just do some squats or do some stretching, stretch your pecs, um, do some walking around. If you can just superset it with pull-ups, you don't even like, if you're going to have like a bench focused day, you don't even have to, uh, go to failure on the pull-ups. You can just kind of like do like, okay, I'm going to do my set of of bench and then I'm going to do like just five pull ups. You know, even if you can, even if you can do well over, you know, more than five, you're just kind of allowing your shoulders and your back and your, um you know, your shoulder blades to still have blood going through them. So then when you go into your next set, you're not entirely, um you know, almost cooled off. All right. So here I'm doing rows, three sets of rows. Um, you know, nothing special, just really made sure I tried to retract my back and basically get my shoulder blades, uh, almost as if I was trying to get my shoulder blades right up next to each other. Um, as if I was trying to get my rear delts to touch, that's maybe how you can say it. Uh, I don't do rows very often because 
I feel like just me doing uh, my usual pull-ups, especially with my body weight, is sufficient enough. Um, because of like the way uh, I have like that really arch back form and I really bring everything back. But when you do weighted pull-ups, um, at least at first, right, you can't really get that complete full retraction in the back um, because like you have this weight weighing you down and it's since the way it's kind of on you is kind of like in a different way. Um, I don't know if like using a weight vest might make things differently. So it's kind of like you're shifting, you're shifting your, uh, your center of gravity almost a little bit. So it's going to take a lot more time and a lot more strength to get back to that like complete, um, you know, chest to bar position with weight, even with 25 pounds, right? I'm starting with, you know, something that is relatively really light and I'm okay with just doing like just 25 pounds. I don't think, I don't see anything wrong with only doing 25 pounds. And then just, of course, almost trying to perfect that, like how I would my body weight, just, you know, keep getting better and better on my body weight. And I still don't think I've completely mastered the pull-up. You know, I feel like if you've mastered the pull-up, it's like, how well can you do the pull-up with just your own body weight, right? All right, so here I'm doing uh, dumbbell curls um, with fat grips. Um, I'm doing like alternating curls, so just one at a time. I think it's very important to try um, and to work, you know, uh, things unilaterally. So you kind of want to kind of like, you know, do one arm at a time or do one leg at a time for some exercises or whatever. Um, just to kind of be able to see like, do you have any imbalances as one leg or one body part going to give up sooner than the other. And if you kind of strengthen these body parts on their own separately, then it's going to allow for like much better performance if you're going to go back to, you know, more, um, you know, bilateral or, like you know, using both of your limbs um, exercises, right? So something like a, like a, what's an example? A pistol squat, right? Will probably help you get better at like your weight squat because now both of your legs would have developed over time in order for you to kind of gain more balance, more mobility, and just more strength than a single leg. Um, so, you know, you can apply the same thing to like literally anywhere else in your body, like your biceps, um, triceps, your shoulders even. Uh, so it's like, again, you really want to make sure you kind of access those weaknesses and whatnot. Also, most of the time uh, when I use weights, uh, I'm really only using them for like supplemental stuff. Most of my compounds are calisthenics. Um, so, I mean, like I'll do like RDLs, right? I'll do RDLs with like a sandbag, single leg RDLs. And I feel like that those are still fine. I'm still moving a lot of my own body and it does require a lot of balance and coordination. Um, and then I might use like a cinder block to do like some other stuff. And then I'm of course here using like dumbbells, sometimes a barbell to do curls. And it's really just because it's like, I'm able to get like much, you know, much better contraction um, than with like ring curls, because like with ring curls, it kind of, your, your weight gets shifted over time when you're doing the movement. But honestly, like ultimately the best curl variation is probably like the... pelican curl but you know you can't really work the pelican curl bilaterally so that's you know why I, I opted to do you know these here and of course it's a much easier position to get into rather than me um you know getting a stretch in my shoulders and then doing the pelican curl and then of course having to hold a false grip so again you know do whatever you feel like is going to suit you you know if you want to use weights with calisthenics use weights but don't abandon both options